Hello students, welcome to Geology Classroom. In today's class, we are going to discuss about origin and uh, salient features of sarcopterygy. So before entering into the topic, uh, let us look at the uh, systematic position of these uh, uh, sarcopterygy group. <clears throat> As we have seen in previous classes, uh, this uh, phylum Cardata, Includes a craniata and a craniata. Craniata also called as a vertebrata. So in this vertebrata group, uh, group we have a neta and a nethostomata. So under nethostomata, we have two superclasses, uh, fishes and uh, tetrapoda. So in this fishes group, uh, we have four classes: Placodermi, Acanthodi, Antrichthys, and Osteichthys. Placodermi and Acanthodi they represent the extinct groups. Antrichthys represents the cartilaginous fishes uh, uh, of today, and the Osteichthys group represents the uh, bony fishes uh, that are living now. <clears throat> so, and this uh, Osteichthys group uh, it is uh, divided into two uh, subclasses. Uh, one is actinoterygy, and another one is sarcoterygy. So, actinoterygy. Uh, also called as uh, ray finned fishes. We have seen uh, the origin and uh, salient features of uh, the actinoterygy in last class. So coming to the sarcoterygy. The sarcoterygy, under the sarcoterygy group, now we are having only few groups left. One is actinistia, another one is uh, diptoid. And uh, next one is tetrapoda. Actually, tetrapoda is given another superclass uh, designation. But according to uh, phylogenetic relationships, tetrapoda is not a separate group. It is the subgroup of sarcoterygy only. But uh, over a period of time, uh, scientists are studying this tetrapoda as a separate superclass. Hence, we are continuing with that uh, type of classification. But um, to be precisely, uh, tetrapoda is not a superclass. It is a subgroup of sarcoterygy only. So now only we are uh, having a uh, actinistia and dipnoid groups and tetrapoda group living. The meaning all these groups are extinct. So coming to the systematic position of uh, sarcoterygy, classification of sarcoterygy. So it is divided into two groups. One is actinistia. In actinistia, we are having coelacanth fishes. So except the coelacanth fish uh, remaining all representatives of this actinistia are extinct now. Only coelacanth fishes are living. Another group is Ripidistia and again Ripidistia, uh, it is divided into two groups. One is uh, Dipnomorpha, another one is Tetrapodomorpha. From Dipnomorpha, Dipnoi group uh, or lungfishes group and another one extinct group, Orolepiformis group uh, originated from this Dipnomorpha group. So they look like a dipnoi present uh, dipnoi fishes. That's why these two groups collectively called as dipnomorpha group. So and out of those two dipnomorphan groups, so uh, dipnoi uh, group is only living now. Orolepiformis group is extinct now. Another one is tetrapodomorpha group. So this tetrapodomorpha group is very very important. From this group only, tetrapoda organisms, the first amphibians, originated from this tetrapodomorphans only. So among tetrapodomorphans, again, uh, several groups are there: Osteolepiformis, Pandirichthyidae. Like this, many uh, groups are there. All these groups are extinct now. Only tetrapodans are. Uh, living now. So the ancestors of tetrapoda and uh, the relatives of tetrapoda which come under tetrapoda marpa, all these groups are extinct. Only now we are having tetrapodans only. So this is the classification and systematic position of sarcoterygy group. Now let us uh, uh, know about the salient features of uh, sarcoterygy group. So the sarcoterygy groups are very robust in size. And they also belong to Astictis uh, class. And uh, the major important character of these uh, fishes is that they are having uh, fleshy lobe fins. So sarcoterygy means uh, lobe finned fishes. So all other fishes, uh, they are having fins, but the fins are not having flesh or muscles in them. But these fishes are having muscles in their fins. So muscle lobe, muscle, 
uh, muzzle fin fishes or uh, fleshy lobe fin fishes is the name given to this uh, uh, sargoterigi group of fishes and these uh, fins uh, another important feature of these fins is that not only they are having muzzles or flesh in them they are also having articulating bones or jointed bones so in the astictis in the actinoterigi group we have seen that they are having the ray like uh, structures in them and those rays are not articulated bones so they are single structures but here in the fins of the sarcoterigi bones are there and these bones are having articulations or joints uh, just like our uh, uh, four limbs and hind limbs uh, are having jointed bones in them <clears throat> so that's why scientists are of opinion that all the tetrapodans evolved from the sarcoterigi only So, and these lobe fins swivel on a shoulder or hip socket like a tetrapodan limb. So, our uh, limbs are also our four hands are hind limbs. Our hands and limbs are also they are having a ball and socket like joint uh, uh, in our uh, uh, pectoral girdles and pelvic girdles. So, like these uh, lobe fins of the sarcoterigi fishes are also they are also having a, a uh, this hip like socket like a uh, Joints in the shoulders, and uh, these bones of these lobe fin, uh, lobe fins of these fishes are uh, directly homologous to the bones of the limbs of land animals, including human beings. So, like this, uh, the bones which are present in the fins of these fishes are homologous structures to the uh, limb bones of the tetrapoda animals. In other words, to be precise, uh, we have to say that our bones, tetrapodan bones. are the successors of the bones of the sarcoterigi fishes so and even individual rays in the fin can be moved individually like uh, toes so in our toes and hand fingers also we can move individual fingers uh, so like this uh, these sarcoterigi fishes also they are having many bones in their limbs and uh, the bones can be moved independently so this feature also it is matching with the tetrapodan group and uh, uh, it is easy to so easy to see how everything fit together in giving sarcoterigi a transitional role between jawed fish and the tetrapoda so in this way we can say that sarcoterigi is the connecting link between jawed fishes and tetrapoda and these are the undoubtedly sarcoterigi group is the ancestor group to the tetrapoda animals and uh, these are capable of breathing air and uh, surviving out of water so uh, this feature is not present in other fishes but the sarcoterigians they can survive out of water also why because their uh, air bladder was present in previous fishes but this air bladder is modified into a pair of lungs in these fishes so air air bladder also helps the fishes to survive to uh, some period for some period of time out of water but these uh, sarcoterigians they survive on land for uh, more period of uh, time than the earlier fishes are actinoterigians so the difference the reason for this is that air bladder in other fishes is having only less uh, uh, vascularization or few number of uh, uh, what uh, blood vessels are connected to the heart and this air bladder in these fishes so that's why they can live for some period of time only on land but whereas the sarcoterigian fishes they have developed many uh, blood vessels uh, so many blood vessels have been developed in the lungs so air bladder is developed into a pair of lungs and these lungs are also they got uh, highly vascularized in other words the lungs have got developed many blood vessels in them which are directly connected to the heart so in this way when the sarcoterigi fish uh, comes on to land uh, it can receive lot of oxygen with the help of this pair of lungs which are highly vascularized so this feature enabled them to survive on land also and uh, certain other changes also took place in the circulatory system like this pulmonary respiration Uh, to adapt to the pulmonary respiration this point only have already explained so the circulatory system has changed uh, some modifications have been taken place in the circulatory system to suit to pulmonary mode of respiration and the sarcoterigians had shiny cosmoid scales and uh, this feature is lost in all advanced lineages so advanced lineages means the fishes which are living now 
like silicant fishes and hypnoi fishes. So in hypnoi and silicant fishes, we are not having, we are not seeing this coxmide scales. But primitive sarcotirigen fishes, they were having the shiny coxmide scales. This feature is not seen in present day sarcotirigen fishes. And uh, they also had a unique tooth material such as enamiloid and teeth and mm, of predatory form. So some fishes are predators in this group. Those predatory fishes, they were having enameled tooth like us. And uh, the teeth of these uh, fishes, uh, they are having mineralized dentins uh, such as petrodentin. And uh, they are also having tooth plates and uh, dentitals of uh, lung fishes also are present. So all these are the unique features of the sarcotirigian fishes. And the sarcotirigian, they were very large size. Uh, most of the sarcotirigian very large in size and uh, in which the muscles uh, uh, were present in the fins. So the muscles which are present in the fins uh, uh, actually help them to walk on the water on uh, the water bed. Or uh, when they came onto land also, they can move on the land with the help of these muscular fins. So this may have been an adaptation to bottom dwelling to uh, allow the fish to push off um, the solid object. So the sarcotirigians are suspected to originate during the time uh, when the waters are shallow, waters became shallow. So in the shallow waters, the sarcotirigian fishes, they have got developed this um, muzzled fins or lobe fins. So with the help of these lobe fins, they were able to walk on the shallow water, uh, <coughs> ground walk on the ground in the shallow waters. And later, the muscular fins, they also help them to come out of the land and move from one pond to another pond. And the sarcotirigians developed pectoral and pelvic fins are also were developed in these things. And these two fins, pectoral fins are homologous to four limbs of the tetrapodans and pelvic fins are homologous to the uh, hind limbs of the tetrapodans. And uh, these fins have bones homologous to the limb bones of the tetrapodans are also. And uh, in fact, tetrapodans got their limb bones from this sarcotirigian group only. And uh, many fossil sarcotirigians uh, developed a neck uh, which allowed them to move their heads. Uh, but this is lost in tetrapod uh, in tetrapods and lungfish. So not in all tetrapods, only in amphibians this feature is lost. Uh, so in remaining fishes, we cannot see this neck region. So all fishes, they are lacking neck, but sarcotirigians, they got neck. So neck, uh, having neck allows them to move their uh, head independently of body. So if the fish uh, is about to move the head, the entire body has to be moved in other fishes. Whereas when uh, if we have neck, uh, so without moving remaining body, we can turn our head with the help of neck. So this is a flexibility. This is an advanced character developed in sarcotirigian fishes. So we can see this neck in all tetrapodans except few like some amphibians. So some amphibians they have lost this uh, uh, neck feature. Uh, and uh, the, the present lung fishes also, they're also lacking this neck. So, but the primitive sarcotirigian fishes, they have got neck and uh, this neck feature also transmitted or inherited to remaining tetrapods except some amphibians. And they also possess two dorsal fins with separate bases as opposed to the single dorsal fin of actinoterigians. So whereas actinoterigians, they were having only single dorsal fin, but these sarcoterigians, they possess two single dorsal fins on the dorsal med median dorsal line. And many early sarcoterigians also have the symmetrical tail. <coughs> tail also was symmetrical in this uh, sarcoterigian fishes. And coming to the coelacanth, coelacanths belong to uh, order coelacanthiformis. And uh, these silicons are living, uh, uh, and uh, uh, extinct silicons are also. So only few specimens are few species, few genera of silicons are living now. And apart, uh, along with this uh, extinct and extant uh, silicons, all these silicons are characterized by a caudal fin with three lobes. So this is a very peculiar feature of the silicon fishes. So the caudal fin possesses three lobes in them. And they're also having external nostrils and an anterior dorsal fin in front of the center of the body. And there are two living species uh, in this coelacanth fishes. One is Latimeria chalumne, another one is Latimeria menodiensis.
and uh, another group lung fishes which belongs to dipnoi order these dipnoi fishes are lung fishes they have plate like teeth uh, useful for crushing and grinding so and uh, these dipnoi fishes also have lungs a caudal fin that confluent with the dorsal and anal fin so in these lung fishes we know that the caudal fin is in continuation with the dorsal fin and anal fins and uh, the lung fishes they are not having pre maxilla and maxilla in their jaws and the extant species are uh, all freshwater forms uh, lung fishes were present in uh, sea waters also but all the sea water lung fishes are extinct now only freshwater lung fishes are living now and the lung fish of the uh, the lung of the australian lung fishes is unpaired so only in three continents lung fishes are living one is australian continent another one is african continent another one is a third one lives in uh, south uh, south america continent so out of these three uh, lung fishes australian lung fishes having only single lung the remaining lung fishes they have two lungs in them or their bladder is divided into two lungs in them so likewise australian lung fishes uh, they also show some other features like flipper like pectoral and pelvic fins uh, large scales and larvae without external gills so these features are confined to australian lung fishes whereas uh, these features are not present in other species uh, and the other species they have filamentous pectoral and pelvic pelvic fins and without trace uh, in the fins and uh, small scales are present in the larvae of these remaining uh, lung fishes uh, they possess external gills now coming to the origin of sarcoterigy so scientists uh, predict that uh, the sarcoterigians appeared first in the <coughs> early in the silurian period and uh, sarolepis and giyu so in this diagram in this slide we can see that the upper picture is the sarolepis reconstructed picture of sarolepis lower picture is the uh, uh, reconstructed picture of giyu fossil so the sarcolepis and giyu are the most primitive fossils of sarcoterigo and these sarcoterigians uh, they developed uh, as a divergence from the actinoterigi so some ancestor actinoterigi fishes they have got some changes uh, so with the changes uh, like this uh, uh, fleshy uh, fleshy uh, fins uh, so like the some changes which are very very important in the identification of sarcoterigi so due to the uh, development of these modifications some ancestor actinoterigi fishes they have became the uh, basal stock or uh, ancestors of the actinoterigi so out of those uh, primitive sarcoterigians uh, these uh, sarcolepis and giyu fossils have been uh, collected by the scientists and uh, these uh, stem group of sarcoterigi uh, like uh, sarcolepis and giyu uh, fishes so other lineages uh, or other uh, Uh, ancestors of other lung fishes and coelacanth fishes and tetrapoda morphan evolved so and uh, out of those fishes uh, kinectis is one fish uh, though this kinectis uh, actually this is type mistake k e n i c h t h y s kinectis is the first sarcoterigian fish to have a internal nostril which enable the uh, this kinectis to breathe with nose so uh, remaining uh, fishes they were having only Uh, external nostrils but one external nostril entered into inside the head and it became internal nostril so internal nostril opened into the buccal cavity so with the help of this uh, external and internal nostrils the kinectis fish was able to breathe with the uh, or uh, breathe the air with the help of this internal nostril so this enabled them to uh, live on the land uh, uh, even though when they are not uh, respiring through gills so kinectis is the first fish to develop this internal nostril remain later all remaining the successors of sarcoterigian fishes they also possess this internal nostrils so now we can see that internal nostrils also present in lung fishes which are living now and uh, the ancestral tribes of the sarcoterigians quickly diversified into diverse group uh, mostly large fish as the devonian period progressed so in the devonian 
which is also called as the golden age of fishes so during the devonian period the uh, sarcotergians uh, they diversified and different types of uh, a vast diversity of uh, sarcotergian fishes was established during this devonian period and uh, they flourished in marine brackish and freshwater environments and uh, uh, <coughs> they were important part uh, during this devonian fauna and most marine forms became extinct now only coelacanths are living in the sea waters and uh, deep knife fishes are living in fresh waters so in some fresh waters uh, during that time uh, they continued to flourish including the rhinodonts and lung fishes so in this picture uh, we are seeing this rhinodont rhizodont this uh, the scientific name of this fish is uh, rhizodus this is a reconstruction of a fossil collected by the scientists. So the rhizodus fishes, uh, they were very large predators and sometimes they grew up to several meters height also, several meters length also. But by the Mesozoic uh, time, coelacanths uh, were less common in the seas and only lungfish remained uh, as important uh, inhabitant of rivers and lake fishes. So later living lungfish are virtually unchanged from their Mesozoic ancestors. So we can consider that living lungfishes are uh, living fossils also and the living australian neoceratodus uh, uh, is uh, truly a living fossil why because it is uh, not having any changes since this mesozoic ancestors time so this is about the uh, origin and salient features of this uh, sarcotergy fishes so with this we have finished the today's topic uh, we will meet in next class with another topic till then bye